Hello and welcome to another new video in this Let's Make series. In this video, I'm going to go over some good and easy level design practices that might help you when designing a 2D platforming game. So let's jump straight into it. Clear level design. Your level design should be clear and easy to navigate through. This can range from understanding what a platform is or isn't to leaving trails of pickups or enemies to help guide the player through the course. Try keeping the terrain simple and easy to understand. Avoid tricky jumps that require pixel-perfect timing. Oh, that's a little close. Let's fix that. Ah, much more breathing space. Brilliant. Or super cheap enemy placements that's impossible to avoid without getting hit. No room to bloody dodge! Ah, there we go. Wonderful. It's all about placing the difficulty in the player's skill, not in confusing and unfair level design. No leaps of faith. These are a big no-no. A player shouldn't have to keep testing what is or isn't a death pit. A few ways you can help the player know if it's bottomless doom or not are give your tiles a sign that tells the player, hey, better not fall down here or indicate that you can go down by leaving a trail of goodies for the drop down. Perhaps place a wall at the edge, showing the player the only way is down. Or you could just label it very clearly like this. <clears throat> pointless dead ends. Keyword here being pointless. These are just annoying. There's nothing worse than going through a tricky section of platforming, only to find out it's a dead end with deadly squat. Dead ends aren't bad as such. Just make sure they're not pointless. Stick in some goodies, power-up juice, some shinies. Just make sure they're not pointless. Difficulty curve. Try and aim for gradual difficulty throughout the level and game. Don't bombard the player with a difficult section right from the start. Gradually ease the player into them. For example, look at this section here. It wouldn't be wise to stick this right at the beginning of the stage or game. Let's make it more inviting for the player. Oh, that's nicer. Let's stick some coins there. There we go. It's wise to keep the trickier sections to the end of the stage or game. Just keep in mind that you may be good at your game, but new players won't be as such. Stage gimmicks. Try and add a couple of unique stage gimmicks or hazards per stage. For example, things like conveyor belts, falling platforms, disappearing blocks, springs, swinging wrecking balls of doom, and so on. Little pieces that the player can interact with or have to avoid. Just adds a little more flavor to the level, other than fighting enemies and jumping across the land. It's a good idea to introduce stage gimmicks in a way that teaches the player their mechanics, and then introduce them to more challenging scenarios. Scenarios. For example, these falling platforms are over solid ground, but later on, they're placed in much more fiendish and taxing ways. Rewards! Reward the player! People like getting rewarded for doing a good job, so you should apply this into your games. Have an optional difficult section of the stage, where then completed, the player is rewarded with treats, and perhaps a nice little shortcut. Reward placement is also a great way to test the player's abilities. It can give them a choice. Do I want to play it safe, or do I want to live dangerously and get that E-Tank? Set pieces. Set pieces are large decorative objects that are just beautiful to look at. From giant trees to spinning turbines, set pieces just brings your stage to the next level. I like to play set pieces in rooms with nothing going on for some downtime areas, where the player can just have a moment to compose themselves before tackling the next tricky section. Concepting. And my most important tip, plan out and test your levels. It's a great excuse to actually use all those pens you've been hoarding over the years. Concepting out level designs on paper is a great way to make you understand how your level will all come together. It helps you understand if something's fun to play before committing hours to work of coding and pixeling, then to only find out it's rubbish. Also along this note, prototyping a stage with minimal graphics and design is also a good idea to help make sure your level is going in the right direction. So there's a few quick and handy tips of mine to help you with your level design. Hey, that rhymes. <laughs> I hope this short little video helps with your level design endeavors. If you enjoyed this content, feel free to give it a like, drop a comment, and subscribe. And you can help fund the series through Patreon, like these people, who are awesome, very awesome. Anyway, until next time, bye for now.